haven't killed him yet. And we've been building for a while. Month and a half into the fuselage kit. No major injuries. I did stab myself with a staple last night. You did. But beginning to take shape. It's got little wings. I mean, if you tilt your head to the left and blink real fast. Maybe. Not quite looking like an airplane yet, but our fuselage kit is in progress. Let's talk about it. building the fuselage kit for, when did we start building this kit? End of April. End of April, and it's now end of May. So we're pushing month and a half to two months of build time. We are starting to look like an airplane. We're getting there. It's getting a little bit better. <laughs> um, this piece is uh, not riveted to the skin yet, but that is the very next step that we're gonna be doing. Turn this up on the side and make a lot of noise. Start building things back here. Uh, this is where our butts kind of sit. I guess our butts sit more like right in here, our legs and then our feet go off there and more stuff attaches and we promise this will fly. Hopefully twice. <laughs> we'll see. So what, what, what have we learned in our first month and a half of building the fuselage kit? We have learned so much because we had to. Okay. Unfortunately, this was where we learned how to do a lot of things that we probably should have learned in the tail kit. Learned in the tail kit. But um bum. Shh. Or how about one of our practice kits? Psst. When are we gonna finish that practice kit? Don't ask me questions I don't know no. the answers to. Normally, do your practice kits, do the tail kit first. Probably do the wings and then get to the fuselage kit. We are not normal. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so, but no, it's been a really fun, educating, uh, and actually a rewarding experience. It's, it's been amazing seeing this come together and start looking like an airplane and start seeing this and go, wait, I, I can actually visualize this uh, happening. Because when we first get this piece of skin it's like that's an airplane that's not gonna fly it's flimsy it flops around but as soon as you start cleat going and then eventually riveting structure to it you really see how the airplane builds on itself and becomes really solid and behold the power of rivets yes oh. now tell me about Stopping by, looking at our sundown or bonanza and inspecting the rivets that are on that. So now that we started building, I've become very aware of how imperfect our certified airplanes are. And I'm sort of getting it in my head because everyone knows I'm working out of this whole perfectionist phase. Um, that ours is going to be so much better. Yes. <laughs> it's not going to be perfect. We've already yes, have, it is. We already have, we have a few blemishes in here and a few things that uh, maybe we could have done differently, but nothing that is concerning. What did you tell me? Paint covers up everything. It does a little bondo, a little paint. You can cover up anything. Um, scratches on aluminum is going to happen. That's why we paint it. We are um, priming just about everything and. I'm really in the let's prime things camp. It's frustrating because you have to plan ahead and there's been a couple days like, we're ready to build. All right, we got everything we need. Let's go start building. Oh crap, it's gonna be two days of priming. It takes us about a day and a half to two days to prime a section of parts because we'll spray one side, let it dry enough, flip it over, spray the other side, let that dry before we start building. Can says 30 minutes to, you know, 30 to 60 minutes and you can now, now overnight, trust me, this is your airplane. Let it, let it dry before you really do any work with it. Um, in our practice kit, we were really wondering, do we 
match drill and dimple and do all that, then prime, does the order matter? Prime before you touch the piece. Prime, clean it up, deburr it, do, do what you need to. You can always drill dimple and rivet after prime. And uh, I was just one of those pieces of information I search for in the internet, uh, maybe not as good as I should have, but I searched to see what is the preferred way, never got a good solution. Uh, then the fuselage kit showed up and it was like, let's go, 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 go. So we just started doing it and it's worked out well. Yeah. It's not perfectly prime. There's spots that I kind of wish I'd go back and spray a little bit more, but some prime is better than no prime. Exactly. Um, not prime in the skins. No. So skins don't get primed. So that means a lot of the tail kit doesn't need to be primed. Because it's a lot of skins. It's a lot of skins. But um, we're, we will start turning this into an airplane, move on to the firewall. Uh, the, our firewall was back ordered in the fuselage kit, but that's scheduled to be delivered a week from today. It's on the way. It's on the way. So I think we're off to the races. Um, so what, what tasks in this fuselage build do you like the most? What do you look forward to the most? Squeezing rivets. Squeezing rivets. Now, before we started the build, I think you were excited about bucking rivets, weren't you? Yeah, and then I had a couple incidences where it didn't go so well. The bucking bar would slip off, and then I'd make a little dent, and now I get nervous. Now, bucking is not our favorite, but it's not the worst. Uh, we will have a lot of bucking to do when um, we start doing this, because there's no squeezing. I oh, know. Golden rule of building an airplane, if you can squeeze a rivet, squeeze a rivet. Yeah. Bucking is one of the last choices. Uh, what's your least favorite method of riveting? Oh, either probably back riveting. Back riveting, it's For noisy. Sure. It, I feel like there's a lack of control. There's some trust of putting the rivets in and a little painter's tape that the rivet will stay flush. Uh, we've got some that aren't quite as flush as we would like them. We debated drilling them out and trying again, but I think we're going to uh, let it go and just a little paint and Bondo will cover it. Um, we're not aiming for absolute perfection. This is not a museum piece. This is a, this is for us and our family to fly and um, just have a good time. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. But we'll spend money on a good paint job and make it, we'll pretend it's perfect. It will be. Yep. Um, countersinking. You probably hate that the most. I hate countersink. I mean, it should be simple. You dial it in and you should get the same countersink every time. I'm just not finding that is what happens. It's like it. you get holes that just don't countersink and you try a little bit more. If you try too hard, you end up making the hole too big. Um, and I've gone back and reviewed my technique. I've talked to a lot of people. Um, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. It's just, um, the one, the one trick I've learned is I have a pick that I'm cleaning out any metal shavings from the countersink tip in between, uh, holes. And that seemed to really make the biggest difference, but, uh, countersinking, uh, double flush rivets, not my favorite. Yeah, but it's not bad. Yeah, there's not many double flush rivets that we have to do. Uh, the tail kit? I think we will have yeah, some. Yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah, I think the tail kit, we might take the uh, trail and edge down to one of our local builders and do it under his supervision. Phil, come to see you. Yep. Uh, but fuselage is on its way. Um, and it's moving along. Yep. It's moving along well, I think. So stay tuned, uh, come back and uh, see the progress as we do a little bit more.